Pruitt from nextlevelguitar.com. Real quick, I was just doing there was a little bit of harmonics uh, with a root note. So I was using the B as the root and just doing a rollover. are a lot of fun. They fill up a bass line, guitar line really, really nice. They add a nice little, nice little, nice little colors to what's going on. Um, Jaco Pastoris used a lot of harmonics in what he was doing and he did them beautifully. And he also used them with the fretless so he was able to slide some of those notes. Um, there are a couple different ways of getting harmonics, some different ones. Now, most people know that like your, your 12th fret harmonics are pretty natural and your 5th fret harmonics are pretty natural. Also, if you have enough on your neck, your 24th fret neck, then you'll be able to get those extra ones. If you're a beginner and you're just starting to work on the harmonics and things like that, you want to check, check them out, um, you have to remember not to hit it too hard and not to hit the string or fret it because you're going to kill the note. We've already talked about that the 5 and the, and the 12 are really easy ones to get. Even with those, you just want to have them a light touch on there. That's another way of tuning. If you've seen some guys do that, sometimes the guys will tune. So like the 5 and the 7. Five, seven, five, seven. That's another way of tuning the guys will use for their harmonics, but you can't put too much weight on it. You have to barely, barely touch it, and it has to be right above the fret, basically. The 12th fret ones, the 12th fret and the fifth fret, right above, right above the fret is the best way to get them where they ring, ring the most and feel the best. So work on it mess with it. If, if it doesn't sound right, right off the bat, don't get frustrated. These things take time. I work with guitar students sometimes and, and they want to get the, uh, the Zach Wilde type guitar bend and get those harmonics that he does and he's amazing at them. So it takes a little bit of time to get that down, but uh, keep working with it. You'll be fine. Some of them get a little bit more difficult to hit because you have to touch them a little bit lighter. So let's say we're doing a second fret for the F sharp and then doing the harmonics off the fourth fret. You have to hit those a little bit lighter than you would on a fifth fret. You can hit those a little bit harder because it's, it's a natural harmonic because of the, the distance between the bridge and where the harmonic is. So let's look at a second fret. See how that one's a little bit doesn't come out as well. You have to be a little bit lighter. You have to be a little bit lighter on hitting those notes for them to come out better. There are also ones that are pinch harmonics, what they're called. Here's how a pinch harmonic works in some cases. This is this is one way of checking it out. You're gonna get the harmonic off the knuckle. Right here. You're going to pluck the string with your first finger back here. Now this is this is the one some some guys will do it full out stretch in this aspect so they're plucking with their ring finger and they're using the first finger to get the harmonic. That's a different way of doing it. Also, what I like to do is I like to use the knuckle harmonic basically so string 
with my first finger and using my knuckle to get the harmonic but playing the note up on the neck. And bending a little bit just to give it a little bit of just to give it a little bit of flavor. Now if you go and listen to one of the weather report tunes, Jocko is doing that in one of the songs. I can't say exactly which technique that he's using, but it's nice to know that there are different versions of it. The stretched out with the first finger or the thumb. So that's just another thing to have in your toolbox to uh, work on different ideas and to check out different things is the whole idea behind being an artist and being a musician. Check out next levelguitar.com and if you want any other information on me check out my website e7bass.com I also get a lot of uh, questions on what kind of gear I'm using and I use um, at, in this video right now I'm using the new Spectre Coda bass with the Bartolini pickups and preamp I'm using the for practice which is a great practice unit I'm using the Ashdown B Social it's 80 watts it's a really really nice practice system it looks good you can actually even use it for your home stereo system because it's Bluetooth compatible so if you get your iPhone going and you're in the other room and you want some music it will start playing it sounds amazing also for a practice unit at for sitting at home your buddy comes over and he has a guitar it has three different inputs on the side so you can plug a guitar and a keyboard and your bass in <clears throat> and have a little jam session right there working on writing some tunes. It also, uh, different versions of it. One version you can just plug in. The second version also comes with a wireless adapter. So if you want to sit on the couch, practice a little bit, you don't have any wires going across the floor. So I also use uh, DR strings because I like, I like the feel of them. They work best for me. But strings and amps and anything else are all a matter of opinion and a matter of preference so check out different stuff be the bass player that you want to be i'll see you next time